When it comes to the inner workings of our brain, scientists have only begun to tap the tip of the iceberg with it. But we do know that we have about 86 billion neurons in the brain. And in recent years, we've discovered that we can shift the activity in our brain and also even shift the architecture of our brain. And this is called neuroplasticity. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get that to work in your favor when it comes to gaining back control over your mind and your life when it comes to anxiety. We'll explore the foundation of that, which is the anxious loop, how it works and how it works for you. Um, we'll also, also share a personal story and then a three-step process on how to begin to recognize this and release it in your life and refocus really on what matters. And boy, do we need it now more than ever. If you're new here, then my name is Dr. Elisha Goldstein. I'm a clinical psychologist, author, and founder of the Mindful Living Collective. I help people go from feeling stuck and overwhelmed to regaining a sense of personal control over their mind and their life so they can focus more what matters and ultimately enjoy life more. If you'd like to join a more in-depth program, step-by-step -step program around overcoming anxiety naturally, then go ahead and click on the link in the description below to the 21 Days to Overcome Anxiety Naturally program. It's free to join and I'll see you in there. Okay. The Canadian psychologist Donald Hebb is famous for this saying, neurons that fire together wire together. And he's talking about the same thing around neuroplasticity and how we can use our minds to change our brains for the better. And we've known about this for decades decades through animal research. And even 10 years ago, we saw how a study around London taxi drivers where because of their training they have to go through, they have to remember non-intuitive routes. And so the memory centers of their brain, this hippocampus showed larger gray matter than let's say other bus drivers or other people in general. And so we learned there that we can actually shift the structure of our brain. And now we know that we can do this through meditation, through exercise, through rest. Um, and a number of different ways to begin to support ourselves. And we know that we can do this with anxiety as well. So we, our brains have this amazing ability to rewire themselves to learn, grow, and heal. And when it comes to anxiety, the very first step to make this happen is understanding how anxiety works, how this loop works, how it operates, and how we can begin to interrupt it. And um, so join me in my office right now. I'm going to show you exactly how this loop works. I'm going to share a personal story around me and how it loop worked for me and how I began to interrupt it. Um, and now you're going to see how it can work for you as well. So you can get from under anxiety's negative, unproductive influence and focus more on what makes you productive and happier. Maybe you can still see me. Let's see. Um... Yeah, you can see me good enough, right? Okay, you don't you won't need to see my head for this anyway. We're gonna move this out of the way. So here's what happened. What happens to us in any given moment, and I'll be might be might be blurry, I don't know. Contact. Okay, there it goes. What happens to us at any given moment is there's a, a cycle that I call an anxious loop. Okay. This is a conditioned reaction that we have no control over when it hits us and when it swells up. So um, what happens is an event happens. This could be an internal event or something external, meaning it could be a feeling that arises, it could be a thought that arises, it could be some kind of cue or trigger that arises. And what happens is we have an interpretation. Let's just call it a thought. Oh my God, is this gonna be like this forever? What if this is like this forever? This is going to be unbearable. I can't handle this. Um, you know, I you know maybe someone else can handle this, but not someone like me, right? I'm, I'm not safe. So I'm going to die. Something like that's going to happen. Then we start having an emotion, right? Then we start having that emotion comes with it a sensation, and that sensation then comes with an action. Call this the anxious loop. This is going to be enormously helpful in a moment. Okay? Again, you don't need to see my head, so don't worry about it. My head's just completely unimportant. And by the way, just a short moment. My teachers, when I was in middle school, or it was junior high back then, when I was in junior high, um, came to my parents and said, you know, 
you really need to get your son a computers that just like kind of come out and people are starting to get them in their house or whatever. Uh, you need to get him a <laughs> a computer because we really can't read his handwriting. And if he could just get a computer, he might be able to really express himself better. <laughs> so anyway, if you can't read this, then you're you're in the same place as my uh, my teacher. So so here's what happens for me. I was up in Northern California. This pandemic hit. I had this thought. Oh my God, what if I'm not able to get back to my kids and we get stuck out here? What if it's like quarantined in this place? My, this wasn't before quarantining was ever, you know, was even happening yet in that moment. My mind went to this place. Um, and the emotion was fear, anxiety. And what happened was my body started to tense. My heart rate started going up. My stomach, my stomach started to kind of like, you know, tense up too. And I started to sweat. And then what I started to do was, Check the news, check the news, check the news, check the news. Constantly doing that. Meanwhile, there was an ocean in front of me. There was uh, the uh, my, my wife, who I just really wanted to spend time with connecting in front of me. But this is where my brain was telling me to pay attention, was this stuff. Which after I was checking and checking, seeing all the news, the thought was like, oh, my God, we're going to hell in a handbasket. I don't think we're going to survive this. Like, what's going to, you know, so this is, this is all happening very quickly, right? So what happens is, when we're in this conditioned reaction, what's going on is the blood flow is retreating back to the limbic center of the brain. Remember, this part right here is involved with emotion regulation and impulse control, executive function. It's the part that kind of has perspective. It's what looks down onto this emotional center, this amygdala, let's say, in the center of our brain and says like, hey man, you're really overreacting. Like, um, let, me, let me show you kind of, let's just do some things for you to chill out and then we can kind of get perspective on this situation. But I didn't have that because the blood flow had retreated there. How do we get the blood flow back to the front of our brain? So study out of uh, UCLA showed um, showed people a couple different images of one of a woman feeling really afraid and a man feeling really angry. And to one group, they said um, they just showed them the images and they showed a lot of activity in the amygdala, right? Not a lot in the prefrontal cortex. They showed the same images to another group and they said, can you tell us how they're feeling? And so um, they said, oh, she's feeling really scared. He's feeling really um, uh, angry. And they showed a lot more activity in the prefrontal region, which is where we want it. We need that strength up there to be able to look down on the amygdala and say, what is it that I'm actually needing right now? What's happening? I want some perspective. I need some space. I need to get into that space between stimulus and response, which Viktor Frankl talks about. I need to widen that space where there's more possibility. Um, uh, I'm more aware of the choice points that are there and also the potential for growth. So I took a deep breath. I named it. Oh my God, we're really caught in this anxious frenzy right now. That's happening right now. And um, I did something really powerful, which I'm going to share with you in a moment, that to me is the most impactful, immediate thing that you can do as an everyday practice to be able to come down from your anxious mind and back into a place of greater grounding and balance. So hang on to this for a second, this anxious loop. So one of the things we want to get at, get better at naming is this anxious loop. And so I, I, I you know, I lead before pandemic, but, um, you know, workshops and and do talks all around the country in different parts of the world. And this, this thing, and, I, and uncovering happiness, I call this the depression loop. It's very similar. And this, being able to name this and write out what your loop is so you can get some space from it, is one of the most single most important things you can begin as a foundation. And if your mind's saying like, you know what, I, that's, that's not new, I kind of learned that before, then what we want to do, that, that may not be, but what I want to do is just bring it top of mind for you so you can, um, so can kind of bring it back into your awareness because it's really, really powerful, right? Really what we want to do if I kind of swing this around again for a second. Because we want to be like somebody here looking at this anxious loop. I was in it. We don't want to be in the loop. We're going to be in the loop sometimes, but we want to be able to take note of it and get and get in it. Because this is that space which we're gonna say there's more choice in, okay? More choice, possibility, freedom. Okay, now, if you wanna give it a shot yourself, go ahead, let's look at what do these 
what are the elements of this anxious loop look like for you? Go ahead and comment below. Share with us what kind of thoughts, emotions, sensations, and actions are related to your experience when you're having the anxious loop. Your engagement below creates a living wisdom for us all to benefit from. Okay, so here's where we take a three-step process to begin to widen that space between stimulus and response, where more choice, possibility, and growth lie, where we can take that little stick figure guy that I showed you earlier, begin to move him or her from the center of the anxious loop outside the anxious loop to recognize more perspective and choice. So this is a three-step process. Uh, if you've followed me, you may have heard me talk about this before. It's worth the repetition. And if this is the first time you're hearing it, then wonderful. This is called recognize, release, refocus. I call it the three R's. So the first thing is to recognize the loop that's happening. We might even just kind of name it. Anxious loop, anxious loop, anxious loop. We just recognize, oh, this is here. It's like this, this moment. That brings more blood flow to the prefrontal region, which is more involved with uh, impulse control and emotion regulation. So we get those neurons firing in that direction. Remember, neurons that fire together, wire together. So we wanna practice this with some level of repetition. That's the first step. The moment we recognize it, we're sitting into a place of greater personal control. A little bit more perspective. Second thing is we have to understand that anxiety is embodied. It's in our body. Our nervous system is our brain coiling down our spine, going throughout our arms and hands and legs and feet and sending signals back and forth, back and forth all the time. So we have to recognize that it's in our body. So where is the anxiety in your body? We have to recognize this. So the very, one of the very first things we do and we talk about within the 21 Days to Overcome Anxiety Naturally program is recognizing anxiety, where it is in our body, and we begin to start this process of releasing. And so, uh, and so for you, you might ask, ask yourself, like, where do you notice it? Is it in your shoulders? Is it fluttering in your chest? Is it in your stomach? And what are some things you can begin to do to actually begin to work it out? I mean, literally stretch it out. Like begin to open up the areas that are contracting so you can send the signals to your brain that, okay, I'm okay. I'm in control right now. So we want to do that with intention, practice, and repetition. So the first thing, recognize, that allows us to get that space between stimulus and response. Release, where am I holding it in my body? And then we refocus with a different question. So the question is, um, what's most important for me to pay attention to right now? Or maybe, um, what's another way that I can see this? If my brain's going into this catastrophizing mode, I might want to ask myself, is there another reason? Uh, is there another way I can see this particular situation? Um, or maybe, you know what, my teacup is full. I need to also focus on what's good in the world right now or what's good in my life right now. As long as we're living and breathing, the saying goes, there's far more right with us than wrong with us. And so it's good to at, at least expand our perspective to also be aware of how, what, what's going well right now in my life. So we refocus with a different question. So instead of what's going wrong, how is the world going to hell in a handbasket, or how is this terrible thing happening? We ask ourselves, okay, so I also want to refocus on a different question. It doesn't mean I need to be Pollyanna and put on rose colored glasses and forget about the difficult things that are happening, but I'm also just holding some perspective. Or maybe the question is, what am I needing right now? Um, and maybe that's the question. So we have different questions. What, what's most important for me to focus on? What am I needing right now? Because um, maybe I'm needing to focus on what's good or be aware of that. Uh, maybe I'm needing to focus on um, how can I soothe my mind and body right now. So we, we refocus with a different question. So that's it. Recognize, release, refocus. Those are the three steps that are going to help you break out of the autopilot of the anxious loop, reground in this moment, and shift your focus. And wherever your focus goes, you invite an energy to flow. So what would the days, weeks, and months ahead be like if there was more energy flowing in the direction that's going to support you in being more productive and happier in your everyday life? If you want more on how to overcome anxiety naturally, I did another great video called Seven Ways to Ease Your Anxious Mind. Make sure to check that out here or on the next screen. I'll leave it for you there too. Uh, if you want a more in-depth program, a step-by-step -step program, join a global community, um, something that's been awesome for so many people. Make sure to click on the link in the description, bo description below for 21 days to overcome anxiety naturally. It's free to join and I will absolutely see you there. If this lesson was valuable to you, make sure to like it and comment on it. That makes sure other people see it here. 
Make sure to also subscribe so you know when the other lessons are coming out too. And I'm gonna leave a couple of really great videos you're gonna love on the next screen.